All right, here we go. First full week of NHL regular season hockey in the books. We're back now, ready for some must-ads, waiver wire targets for your fantasy hockey league. Welcome back to Cherry Picking Podcast. Ryan Sarah, your host here, and ready to look at some guys that really, um, their volume-wise has shown some promise, uh, production especially, and this where these guys are shaping up in the lineup that are obviously available on your waiver wire. Two of the guys are definitely a little bit more public, probably might be available in some of your leagues, and if they are, definitely grab them right away. And then three guys that are a little bit deeper. So five guys after the first week to really target. So let's get right into it. The first guy I'm going to be targeting is Andre Kuzmenko. Now this guy, he's been quite popular to start this season, especially in this Vancouver Canucks lineup, obviously. I love this kid. Um, there's been a, f- a few young Europeans, especially Russians on this team, that have really started to develop. Uh, Vasily Podskol- Podkolzin is one of those names. And Andre Kuzmenko is just the latest to burst on the scene, I think, for the Canucks. He's not really a kid, I guess you could say, at 26 years of age. Uh, he was undrafted. He played eight seasons in the KHL before coming over. This is his first full season in the NHL. Now, he's been slotted on a line with Elias Peterson, which is a great thing. I think PD's going to have a great year this year, so which will inherently really help this guy's production and really be able to just grow as a player uh, in the big league in the NHL. So a few games in the season, this guy has the, the highest expected goals rate on his team, which I think is really substantial, looking at obviously the first few games of the season. He's the only player on the team that has a mark above one. To put things into perspective, Peterson's expected goal rate is 0.46, so the goals will start to come for Kuzmenko, uh, especially at this rate. He's actually showing a great volume too early on. He's averaging the second most time uh, ice time per amongst uh, win- wingers on this team, only behind Brock Besser. Not only that, but he has the second most shot attempts on his team behind Peterson with 19, and he also has 12 shots on goal, which also leads the team as well. So his shooting percentage is only 8.3 right now, which is very, very low for a player of his skill and a player that's getting as much volume as he is right now. If he can bump that up to 12, this guy's value is going to go through the roof. He's 39% rostered on ESPN leagues and Yahoo leagues, so definitely if he's available on your waiver wire, scoop this guy up immediately. All right, the next guy that I'm going to be targeting uh, this week specifically, excuse me, is Marty Neches. He's rostered in 32% of Yahoo leagues, 26% of ESPN leagues. So if you're playing ESPN league, you have a little bit of upper hand to get this guy before your league mates. This guy I have a little bit more confidence in uh, just because he plays on a much better team than um, Kuzmenko does. Uh, through the first three games, he has two goals and five points, and that's not even the best part. Very much like the guy, guy I just talked about, his expected goals rate is high. He's second on a team that has a ton of pr- uh, very productive forwards, and it's around 0.83. He has volume two, second to only Ajo in terms of ice time per game amongst forwards. He's averaging over 18 minutes per game uh, through the first three games, and I've watched the Canes games. He's looked, He's been one of the best forwards on the ice, bar none. He's flying out there, super skilled, um, and he's really, really fast. So th- those are obviously things you want to have on your fantasy ro- roster, and especially in a guy with such good skill in a team that has a lot of skill as well. So the second line features right now is Neches, uh, Kokniemi, and Sveshnikov has easily been the most efficient line for them thus far. Uh, they, as a whole, have an expected goals percentage of around just 60, which is pretty high, especially to start the season. Pacioretty still won't be back until at least mid-December, it seems like, and that's pretty hopeful. They said back in August when this injury went through that he was, it was going to be about a six-month return to, uh, timetable for him. So if this guy continues to produce at this level, I think there's no reason to believe that when Pacioretty even comes back, he'll be able to stay and stay at this volume. All right, so moving on to the next guy is Mario Ferraro. So he's a defenseman for the San Jose Sharks, a guy I think a lot of people can maybe take a little bit of a flyer on at this point. I don't think he's on a ton of people's radars right now. He's 9% rostered in Yahoo leagues, 19% rostered in ESPN leagues. Um, I really like the way this guy has started the season for the Sharks. To this point, before their matchup against the Islanders, he has three points in their four games. I'm impressed with this guy, not only just because of his point production so far so early. uh, He does a lot of things on the ice that are really good. For one, he blocks a ton. He has 10 blocks through four games, which is pretty high. Um, and then he also, one of his three power, one of his three points was on the power play as well, which is obviously a good thing to have. Um, one thing to know too, he's on the ice a ton. He has the second most, uh, time on the ice only behind Eric Carlson. He's averaging almost 24 minutes of ice time per game, uh, which makes his share of possible ice time around 39%. That's higher than guys like Chris Letang, Alex Petrangelo, Mikhail Sergachev, and even Brent Burns to this point. So you want a guy obviously who's on the ice 
a ton. And at someone who's only owned at 9%, that's very valuable to try to add to your roster. I could also see him moving around a bit in this lineup. He has played with Carlson a lot. I don't know if they're the best duo. Carlson really has lost a step ever since he's come over to San Jose, and especially in the last two seasons. You know, just watching the games, uh, he, from the blue line, he's barely even getting pucks on net. You know, he's going back to the corner, and he's making a ton of turnovers and a ton of mistakes, which obviously you don't want to see from Eric Carlson. So look for him to move around. Maybe he's going to be playing with Jacob Megna. Regardless of who Ferrar is playing with, I still think he's going to get the volume he deserves. Um, and he's only behind David Savard and John, John Carlson in terms of total shifts in the NHL at this point. He's 106 in four games. He has zero defensive zone giveaways. So I think David Quinn definitely has a little bit of faith in this guy and will continue to slot him high in the lineup. All right, next guy, also a little bit of a deeper dive to this point, Gabriel Velarde. Uh, right now, he is originally a center, but with the amount of centers on this LA Kings team, he has left wing and right wing availability in uh, ES or Yahoo leagues. Excuse me. Right now, 11% rostered in Yahoo leagues, four and a half percent rostered in ESPN leagues, and he couldn't have not have had a better start to his season. He's already had a point per game. Uh, he's been scoring at an elite rate already. His goals per 60 minutes to start the season is 2.74. Is that sustainable amongst this Kings lineup? Maybe not, but it's definitely awesome to see a guy start this well uh, amongst such a deep lineup. That's Right now, he's top 25 in that category. That's higher than guys like Kirill Kaprizov and Rupe Hintz to start the season. Uh, for a guy that's that lowly rostered, it's a steal. I mean, pick him up now, ride him while he's hot, and I'm sure throughout the season, he'll continue to produce at a pretty consistent rate. He's currently on a line right now with Quinton Byfield and Alex Iafalo. I really like that, um, you know, young guys who are all starting to produce at a pretty high rate for this Kings team. This easily has been the best line so far for the Kings too. Uh, they have a top 10 expected goals percentage rate amongst all lines in the, or forward lines in the NHL, which is awesome. And now, like I mentioned, lots of mouths to feed on this Kings team in terms of fantasy hockey players. Uh, Kempe, Fiala, Kopitar, but this team proved last year that they can score an elite rate on five on five, and they've continued to do so early on the season. So I really don't see why there's any reason to believe why Velarde won't be able to maybe not keep up this standard, but a very st a consistent standard to put him on your consistent daily roster. All right, last guy I'm targeting is Kalen Addison on the Minnesota Wild. I'm really starting to like this kid and what he's doing on this Wild team. I love where he's getting slotted in as well. He's only 14% rostered on in Yahoo leagues, 5.4% rostered uh, on ESPN leagues. This 22-year-old is already quarterbacking the PP1 for this Wild team, which has a ton of skill on it. With confidence and high-level puck-moving ability, this guy should be a must-add for pretty much everybody. Um, he definitely has some work to do in the defensive end, but I think he's still going to be special. He had three assists uh, in their last game against Colorado, former Stanley Cup defending champions. He had five shots on goal in that game as well, which is quite substantial. That's his highest total to date uh, out of any NHL game that he's played for before. Even though this wild decor is pretty deep, he's still playing almost 19 minutes of ice time per game. Maybe that's a little low for your liking, but his time on PP1 will be extremely valuable. I'm telling you, his points per 60 minutes right now is around 4.3. Like Velarde, is that sustainable? Probably not. But to have a young guy be so efficient so early, the coach has no other reason but to extend his leash and to continue to give him some more time in the lineup. So I really like Kalen Addison as my last must add for this week. Thank you so much for tuning in. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. I'd love to hear how your guys' fantasy hockey teams are shaping up to this point in the season and which guys on the waiver wire you're going to be targeting. It's going to be a hell of a season. Be sure to look out for our next long-form podcast, which should be coming before the weekend. Really excited to show that to you guys, talk about maybe where Patrick Kane's going to end up and what else is really going to be happening in the NHL for the rest of the season. So I'll see you guys next time.